2018 for the addiction supportive housing reunion be approved from the mayor and council grants to others for an amount not to exceed one hundred dollars councillor black i'll entertain your comments first to the yeah. motion well normally I, I wouldn't support this because i believe it goes against our policy but it seems that every time someone comes and asks for this we change the policy and vote in favor of giving this uh this grant you know and, and for whatever reason i mean they they are they are uh, worthy and uh, uh so i thought well i won't go against the the will of council and just uh Instead, go along with what they have done in the past. Councillor Height. Thank you, Mayor Luke. Uh, maybe, does staff know if uh, Homes House applied for any of our council grant money? Or, and are they able to? Uh, through the mayor, <clears throat> they have not made application as part of uh, the 2018 grant request. They're certainly entitled to do so, uh, but would have to get the request in by October 1st of each year for the following year. Okay, I'm wondering, like, to fix our policy issue, if we shouldn't have something for under $100 to go through that grant program and set aside maybe $1,000 and just have staff do it so it doesn't actually have to go through so much paperwork, as it were, for 58 bucks or whatever it was. Is that possible? Mr. CAO? We did, in fact, discuss that at last week's um, SLT meeting. And we are working on some sort of wording around a sort of de minimis policy, which is to say at a certain dollar value and under that you delegate your authority to us so that matters in the tens or dozens of dollars just don't come to your attention. It really does cost us about 600 bucks every 10 minutes to run this meeting. So we shouldn't talk about $50 items ever. Good job. Point. Thank you. Any further uh, discussion on this motion for approval? Those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Page 51. Moved by Councillor Black, seconded by Councillor Brunton at the request of Tanya Van Rooy for the dates of July 27th, August 24th, and September 14th of 2018 to be known as Carnival 2018 in downtown Simcoe to be designated as a municipally significant event be approved subject to the following. A. Receipt of all required approvals and B. Fulfillment of all county special event and business licensing requirements within the prescribed time frame in policy discussion. Councillor Columbus, please. Mr. Mayor, when I read this, I was curious as to whether there would re be requirement for street closures during those three days. Do we know about that at all? Um, I can only tell you that based on my knowledge and talking to this group, the July 27th, I believe, is to take place on Argyle Street between Norfolk and Culver? Culver, yeah, thank you, Culver. Um, and that request will have to be made before July 27th. That's all I am aware of is that one date and that section out in front of the Norfolk Arts Center. Yes, go ahead. All I'm thinking of, I recall the same person was having an event in Delhi like that, and Main Street was closed, and some of the merchants weren't very happy about the fact that the street was closed for so long. If, if there's three of them with three street closures, although the street closure issue is not here tonight, but it could be coming down the road. Uh, you make your point well, and I guess that'll be up to this council to decide the length of the closure and the detour route, etc. I have Geisens in all of our place. And I looked at and said there's three days, is the July the 27th, August the 24th, and September 14th. Will all of those have to be closed? That's what I'm wondering. Thank you. Yes, and I don't know that at this time. Uh, Mr. Clerk, and then I'll go on to Councillor Oliver. I don't, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I don't have the specific details on this event, but um, 
with any new event where there is a street closure, there's a requirement now in, in policy for a report to be brought forward to council. So if council decided not to approve the street closure, then um, there, there would be a lack of fulfillment of the uh, special events policy and it, it, would, it would be, so council ultimately could at a later stage decide that they don't want one of these uh, dates to occur. Okay, Councillor Oliver, please. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I was just going to comment on one from last summer because I did attend uh, one of the carnival evenings that happened on the street just south of Argyle. What is that? Yeah. Sydenham. Thank you very yes. much. In front of Boyko Source for Sports. And I assume the merchants were quite happy with it that evening because the street was absolutely packed with people, not vehicles. So, you know, I, I, I know we're all sensitive to that, and I think we required this lady, like the organizers last year, to make sure they consult with the merchants, and I'm sure they'll do the same again. But to me, it was a successful event because the street was full of people and not vehicles. Councillor Black. Well, it, and it should go through the BIA. Um, they should be informed of this, but I can attest to the fact that that street has been closed before and there weren't any problems. And I think we need to look at the business mix. The people that get upset with street closures are the retail operations. And if you look in that, uh, that old Simcoe Reformer building, uh, you've got some vacancies there. You have a hairdresser, you have uh, a real estate. It's mostly service now, restaurant, and uh, a, or a variety store that's now closed. So I don't think uh, the closure of the street is going to impact those businesses at all and in fact would uh, probably make things better just as Councillor Oliver has indicated that uh, transpired over on Sydenham Street. Any other comments? I will call the question. Those in favor? Carried. On to page 55. Communication from Sue Wilkins, Pride Haldeman, Norfolk, and this is concerning their second annual Pride Day in Dunville Central Park. Been moved by Councillor Black, seconded by Councillor Geisen, that the correspondence from Sue Wilkins, Pride Haldeman, Norfolk, be received as information. Discussion on this. Hearing none, those in favor? It's carried. The next communication is from Paul Hossack, the president of 211-5810 Ontario, Inc. This is a request for a license, a liquor license extended, extension, sorry. <coughs> Moved by Councillor Brunton, seconded by Councillor Columbus. The council has no objection to the request of Paul Hossack of the Norfolk Tavern, 200 Main Street in Port Dover to have a temporary license, a liquor license extension from 11 o'clock a.m. on mm -hmm. Thursday, July the 12th, 2018, until 2 o'clock a.m. Saturday, July the 14th. Discussion? Those in favor? Carried. Item E on page 65 is from the Port Dover Board of Trade, Lynn River Arts and Music Festival, and this too is an LCBO special occasion uh, permit notice to the municipality. It's been moved by Brunton, seconded by Black, the council approve the special occasion permit of the board, uh, sorry, Port Dover Board of Trade for the Lynn River Music and Arts Festival on August 3, 4, 5, and 6, 2018. This is to be held in uh, Wellington Park, 50 Bonnie Drive in Simcoe, and it's pending the receipt of all other required Approvals. Any discussion here? Those in favor? That's carried. Thank you. <clears throat> Item number I, uh, nine on page 67 is the adoption correction of council meeting minutes. This is from two weeks ago, the council meeting minutes of May the 8th, 2018. Is there anything to bring before us? from those minutes. They look okay. I will then declare them adopted as they are printed in our agenda. Item 10 are reports of committees. 
And we'll deal with the uh, council committee meeting of last Tuesday, May 15th. And of course, we were all uh, distributed on Friday with a separate cover from the closed session minutes. It's been moved by Wells and seconded by Brunton that the open and closed minutes of the council and committee meeting of May 15th, 2018 be approved as presented. Any discussion on those minutes on page 75? If not, those in favor? It's carried, thank you. Tom Howe Landfill Community Liaison Committee Minutes of December the 13th, 2017, page 83, moved by Bronton, seconded by Geisens, that the minutes of the Tom Howe Landfill Community Liaison Committee meeting of December the 13th, 2017, be received as information discussion. Councillor Height, Black, and Columbus, please. Thank you, Mayor Luke. I see on page 84, the leachate removed in 2017 was 20 million more liters than in 2016. And I know that we've raised our prices on the leachate. I'm assuming it says here in the report that a lot of it goes, some goes to Haldeman, some goes to Norfolk. I'm wondering how much more money it costs us to do that. And where's the percentages at? Does Haldeman get more of it or does Simcoe? Um, through the mayor to council, it's a, um, it's not a simple answer with respect to where it goes. Um, we work with Haldeman to figure out the most cost-effective way of dealing with it at that time. Um, so it moves around from location to location, uh, depending on uh, sometimes the Haldeman facilities can't handle it, sometimes they can, sometimes the sheer volume it needs to be distributed around. So we sit around, we go around and we move it all over the place depending on the cheapest way to do that. Um, with respect to um, the rates, Whatever rate we charge or whatever rate Haldeman charges gets billed back to the appropriate municipality in accordance with the cost sharing agreement that we have with Haldeman over with respect to the landfill. Right, but when we raise our rates is what I'm saying is that we're actually billing ourselves. Effectively, we are billing ourselves, um, but it's the um, wastewater treatment facilities are funded through the rate payers. The landfills are funded through the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. So there's that fee so that the appropriate parties are paying the appropriate fees. And there was, <coughs> excuse me, additional infrastructure put in place at all of these facilities to ensure that the leachate is being taken. So this is an actual, an actual reflection of our costs <coughs> to the direction that the council had provided to us when we were working on the, all of the various studies for the, for the cost with the halt, with the septage and sewage rates and all of that sort of stuff. My, my concern is that when you're out 20 million liters, were you still within budget? Um, through the chairman to council, um, yes, if, if, you, if you notice, there's a significant amount that leachate ch has changed over the years, and some years we've been higher than even that. Mm -hmm. So we actually account for those kind of fluctuations. That's not uncommon to see. It also depends on the precipitation that we receive in a year, how much leachate we receive. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Black, please. Well, my question is the same area about the, the leachate, and I was just wondering, it, it seems uh, erratic, and one might think that over the years after a closure that the volume of uh, leachate would begin to go down, but I don't know how that operates, maybe over 10 years or 20 years. So my question is, um, could, would we expect, like in future years, maybe long range, that... Uh, that number of liters would start to drop? Um, through the mayor to council, um, that would be wishful thinking in my opinion. <laughs> um, unfortunately, the majority of the landfills in the province were created long before people fully comprehended the impacts of placing certain materials in the ground. And as a result, many of the things that have been placed in our landfills are going to be there for hundreds of years before they fully break down, which means that we're, you will eventually see it. I do not believe that in my lifetime or my children's lifetime are we going to see this number get down to zero. Councillor Columbus. Mr. Mayor, my question too is in that same area, but it just that last bullet there under that same leachate removed title says Norfolk County continues to upgrade the Waterford Wastewater Treatment Plant to allow treatment of leachate, and I thought we weren't going to do leachate treatment at water. 
uh, through the mayor to council. Uh, Councillor Columbus, you are correct. Um, these minutes are from a December meeting before county council had made that decision with respect to the leachate, so they will be updated at their next meeting. Okay. Thank you. Anything further? Moved by Bronton, seconded by Geisen, so that the minutes of the town hall landfill community liaison committee meeting of December the 13th, 2017. I probably read this, be received as information. Any other discussion on the motion? Those in favor? It's carried, thank you. My apologies. I read it a second time. On to page 87. The move by Councillor Black, seconded by Councillor Brunton, that the minutes of the Accessibility Advisory Committee meeting of April the 17th, 2018, be received as information. Any questions, Councillor Oliver, please? Uh, Mr. Mayor, my question is on page 88, about uh, two thirds of the way down, the third last paragraph. And I, I guess I've been curious about this before, where I know we're mandated to do certain things under the accessibility legislation and and our committee is suggesting parks be reviewed and considered for accessibility projects and list those three. Are, are we safe in assuming that only projects which would be mandated under the legislation would be ones that would come forward from that kind of suggestion? I mean, I, I don't want our committee proactively suggesting spending money on initiatives that we aren't required to do. I guess that's what I'm trying to say without being too blunt about it. So can, I don't know who to direct this to, Mr. Mayor, but I, I just want some kind of reassurance that, that any projects being put forward by the committee would be ones that we are required to undertake under the legislation. Thank you, Mr. Kirtland. Through the mayor, I'll, I'll attempt here. Yeah, any any time um, there is new park development, there already is how do I say the set of standards and things that come in for for those purposes. So we, our um, community services staff, do sit with the uh, AODA staff and we, we talk through what is needed. Uh, unfortunately, or, I mean not unfortunately, but. Um, there is a need now for um, for more, you know, with people with mobility issues to have more and more of these in our out outdoor park system. More things, ramps are simple things, some equipment. So we are doing everything that that is required of us. It is discussed thoroughly before a project goes ahead. Thank you, Councillor Columbus and Black. My question is with respect to the Port Dover beach mats on page 88. It says that they're frayed. And that was um, a month ago this report was written. So has any uh, headway been made on those mats to have them replaced by the company that manufactured and supplied them to the county? Oh, okay, my apologies. Uh, Councillor Black, go ahead. At our last meeting, um, Shelby Verkint, that's her married name now, right? Yep. Um, reported that those mats have been sent back to New Jersey where they were manufactured and they um, are going to uphold their warranty and repair them at no cost. And they'll come back here. Good. Okay. Thank so. you. Councillor Black, I had you as next speaker, so okay. well, uh, just, I see Councillor Columbus is finished. Just, uh, as Council's representative on the Accessibility Advisory Committee, I can say that um, um, the budgeting process, I have asked questions about how that operates. Um, uh, each department sort of has their own projects, the, the accessibility projects, and then the committee puts forward their priority and um, I suggest to them at the time that, that you know that that be the process that they list them one two three in order of priority and council did give um, grant a certain amount of money I'm not sure what it was 275 something like like that for those projects and I believe staff now are looking at maybe a more consolidated approach where um, each department are looking at their projects, but those projects then may come to the Accessibility Committee and be reviewed by them in terms of their priorities. 
So, um, and your question about the mandated, I do ask that question on behalf of council when I'm there about which ones do we have to do? And that plugs into the whole idea of which ones are the priority, both in, in terms of mandated and uh, the ones that they really think they need and uh, are the priority. Thank you. <clears throat> Councillor Brunton. Uh, thank you, Mayor Luke. Same page, page 88 there, if I may. On the second paragraph, it says uh, there's some funding become on, uh, or became available through the federal government. And then it goes on to say Norfolk County staff are discussing combining several projects at Norfolk, or sorry, Governor Simcoe Square. And I'm just wondering, uh, do we have that many projects here at Governor Simcoe Square? Could maybe somebody tell me what they are? Maybe a, li a little bit of history, I guess. This all started a few years ago. Some uh, residents complaining about the lack of wheelchair parking around Governor Simcoe Square. And then, of course, uh, with the new rules and regulations, the ones that we have already aren't legal. So uh, they, they looked at that. Uh, they got the, the library involved in the library. Um, they had their needs. They were going to make their front entrance accessible because they had accessible parking down here and not up here. And I thought, oh, no, don't do that. You've already got an accessible entrance here. And then they were looking at the courtyard. Uh, the Heritage Committee got involved with the, the trees and the roof and the fact that the whole Governor Simcoe Square is designated. And then... Um, then they st the public works got involved with getting across the road and the configuration of this whole square is kind of like a roundabout in a way and you have a weird stop sign on Talbot Street South. So all of these, it kind of snowballed and, and all the various departments started to get involved. I believe, I've been told that there is some sort of design that will come back to the committee and then through their recommendation back to this council. Thank you. Councillor Height, please. Thank you, Mayor Dirk. Uh, were we able to get the uh, submission in on time? I know it's two days hence, but do we have that already in? The application for the grant funding? I'm sorry, I, I don't actually, I know we've had some discussions around that. I will provide some sort of communication to council. Uh, I certainly hope so, but I, I, I can't confirm at this time. Thank you. No, no problem, I, I can wait for that. Councilor now, Black, can you shed anything on that just before we move on? I can on? say that this was, again, discussed at the last Accessibility Advisory Committee, and it was Shelby, who was in the Human Resource Department, that brought it forward and brought it to our attention. So. I guess I don't really know for sure if it has been done. I would make the assumption since she brought it forward to us that she was planning on doing it and hopefully has submitted. Okay, and I guess our staff will get, get that information okay. to us. Continue, sir. Okay, yeah, I'm wondering because I know we're uh, working on the Port Rowan Medical Center. I believe Public Works is reviewing that, the facilities, or the Langton Admin Building. They also could use accessibility. I don't know if there's still time to get a couple more in or what's going on with those two buildings. I know the med center is being looked at. Maybe Public Works can provide us an update on that. Through the Mayor to Council, I don't have that information here. I can certainly look into it and get back to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councilor Hyde. Anything else? Accessibility Advisory Committee receives information. Those in favor? Opposed? Carried. On to page 91, moved by Wells, seconded by Columbus, at the minutes of the Port Dover Harbor Marina Advisory Committee meeting of April 11th, 2018, be received as information. Any questions on these minutes? Councillor Oliver. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess to Mr. Cridlin. Uh, can we assume this was the inaugural? Through the Mayor, yes, this was number well, one. Congratulations to you, Bill. I'm, I, for one, and I'm sure everybody around the table is glad to see the committee is now in place.
functioning. I, I don't see any reference to any fist fights in the minutes of the meeting, so I'm really happy about that. They're all getting along, so congratulations. A job well done. Oh. Oh, Councillor Black, please. Sort of my question as well, since it was an inaugural meeting, just wondered uh, if Bill had anything to say about it, if there was anything outstanding, or if how things went. It sounds like uh, through the nod of his head, everything was all right, but maybe Bill can say for himself. Yes, th through the mayor, um, being the first meeting, um, obviously we explained some of the rules or what we, we thought we would like to see. The, uh, the board members uh, definitely got to know each other. We had some good gen general open conversation on which way they would like to, s you know, different things they would like to see in the, the marina. We gave some guidance on how we would bring these forward. So I think we're off to a great start. We um, were unable in the first meeting to um, vote in a chair and co-chair just because everybody was new. So we had booked a meeting one month after and unfortunately there were two individuals couldn't attend. So we do have one next month. We're getting a lot of meetings here going. They'll get their chair and co-chair and then they'll be able to get into some, some decision making and bring some recommendations for it. So I'm fairly positive on it now and, and I think we're going to have a good outcome here. Anything further? Information, those in favor? Thank you, and thank you, uh, Mr. Cridlin. We'll move on from the marina to the Port Dover Museum, moved by Wells, page 95, seconded by Columbus, that the minutes of the Port Dover Harbor Museum Advisory Committee meeting of April the 4th, 2018, be received as information. Any discussion or questions on these minutes? Councillor Wells, please. Through the mayor, Councillor uh, Wells, that is uh, a defibrillator. You see the m a number of the buildings. That site does not have one, and of course, it's open to the public, quite a few, and it's part of the rollout. It's been budgeted. Thank you. Anything further? Call the question. Those in favor? That's carried. Thank you. I'm on page 97 now, Councillor Black has moved. Councillor Geisens. Seconded that the minutes of the Tourism and Economic Development Advisory Board meeting of April the 30th, 2018 be received as information. Questions, discussion on these minutes, page 97. Councillor Columbus, please. Yes, Mr. Mayor, page 99 of the agenda package, or page 3 of 4. It's item 6, new business, a BOGO book. Perhaps uh, Councillor Height can explain what that's about. It's not possible that you've never bought a BOGO book here, Mr. Columbus. <laughs> I, that's impossible. Maybe I did. Tell me what it's about. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll defer this to Mr. Baird so he can explain the merits of the BOGO book. Through the mayor, uh, BOGO stands for Buy One, Get One, and it was a partnership put together by, it's published by Timmermans Ranch. They're located in uh, Nixon, and they include a whole bunch of uh, destinations in Norfolk County that offer know second entrees or second tea times or golf uh, green fees as a way to provide more exposure to Norfolk County and the and the, and the areas uh, activities and events okay makes sense thank you I have one and I've used it and they are a bargain go ahead Councillor Height maybe we need uh, uh, Councillor Oliver pushing them he seems to do a great job with chase the ace and maybe it's buy one get one Actually, Mr. Mayor, I'm really glad my colleague to my left was the one that asked the question because I didn't know the acronym either, and I should have too. So, and I'll buy one of those books if we have access to them. I mean, uh, you said you had one. You've got I had one. Track. I, I, I used it on the weekend. Yeah. They're excellent. Excellent deal all the way around for everyone. Yes. Okay. Receive his information. The Tourism and Economic Development Advisory Board meeting minutes those in favor it's carried page 101 moved by councillor columbus and seconded by councillor black that the minutes and the curator's report of the delhi tobacco museum and cultural advisory committee meeting of may the 16 2018 be received as information discussion or questions those in favor Carried. Page 105. 
Been moved by Councillor Black and seconded by Councillor Columbus that minutes of the Norfolk Environmental Advisory Committee minutes meeting of April the 9th, 2018 be received as information. Any questions or discussion on these minutes? Those in favor? Those two are carried. Thank you. That concludes reports from our various committees. We'll now I'd like to jump to page 169, please. This was a notice of motion that I presented to council two weeks ago tonight. It's, no, wait a second here, and it's uh, before you. In uh, the motion form tonight to be considered by council, uh, I would like to put this on the floor. I do have a mover, but I do not have a seconder at this point. Councillor Black has moved. Is there a seconder? Councillor Wells, thank you. It is lengthy. Um, I'm going to go uh, moved by Black, seconded by Wells. I'm going to skip the whereas, if you don't mind. I think you've read this previously. But this motion would uh, have Norfolk County Council establish a recreational facility advisory board to be primarily comprised of unelected members of Norfolk County community. There would be seven members of this committee. Five would be from the community of Norfolk County, the mayor of the county, and one member of Norfolk County Council. Secondly, that the five public positions be weighted for those with business expertise or previously community leadership related to significant capital projects or fundraising, and that the county staff are to draft terms of reference for this committee, which will address tenure of board members, purpose, and mandate, and that the board's initial focus shall be receiving input from the fub public, fundraising, and acting as a liaison to the county council. And finally, that the board's mandate in terms of reference after adopted by council be subject to regular review and amendments to coincide with the various stages of progression of a recreational facility project. Uh, open it for discussion. I'll start with uh, Councillor Black and then Councillor Oliver. Or did you... go, go ahead. I'm sorry. Councillor Black. Go ahead. I, I uh, just it's a procedural question. Yes. I would, I, when I saw you as the one that put this forward as a notice of motion, I said, well, that's wonderful. Congratulations. Are you not allowed to be the mover of this motion, Mr. Mayor? I was just surprised when you called for a, for a mover, whereas you were there as the notice of motion one. So I, I'm just curious. And the clerk Yeah, will well, I didn't feel that, that being in the chair, I could certainly move a motion. So... Uh, uh, through through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, as the chair, he could have moved it, but he would have had to step down to, from the chair. Okay. The meeting. Thanks, but I do want to give you credit for for putting this forward to us at one point. I think it's a oh, great well, idea, and uh, I applaud you for having that. If, uh, if 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 this happens to get moved by this council, the council gets the credit for putting this in place. Councillor Black, uh, to the motion, please. Yeah, well, I, and I too, I, I agree 100% with uh, Councillor Oliver. I, I think uh, I do applaud your worship, or your Mayor Luke. I applaud your uh, initiative in putting this forward, and I am uh, supportive of it. And I, I think what it will do is kind of fine tune, hone, uh, focus um, the community you know, rather than the council. So there's a separate group with their own terms of reference and they'll be able to, to look at uh, the needs in, in more detail across the whole area. So uh, I think it's an important step that we, that, uh, we take. Um, I think it will also show that uh, to the community that we're serious in proceeding with looking at uh, the needs of the community all of Norfolk County, and uh, certainly, um, you know, I'm excited about this whole project, and I, uh, Mr. Mayor, would offer up my name um, to be a member of this committee. Councillor Oliver, please. 
Uh, Mr. Mayor, part of why I thought this was a good idea when I first saw it is thinking back to the public consultation meetings we had throughout the fall of last year. I think without exception, at all of the meetings, there, there were people that indicated a willingness to serve in one way or another should this initiative ever go ahead. And so here will be the first opportunity, I think, for people to to put their money where their mouth was in term, not literally their money, but at least their efforts and their volunteerism uh, when they said they would. So I think, I personally think we'll have really good response from the community all across the county, I hope, to get involved in this. Uh, thank you, Councillor Oliver. And I guess I was just talking with the clerk, Councillor Black, that we would, uh, if this is passed, would have a member of council along with myself uh, be part of this advisory committee. And since uh, it is uh, your motion, you could add that, unless there's someone else that wishes to be appointed to this. Uh, I'll leave it up to you to handle it. Uh, certainly, if not tonight down the road, we would have to appoint. Uh, yes. Is there anyone else that's interested? Anyone else interested in sitting on this advisory board? Uh, Councillor Black saying no hands. Do you wish to add that you be the council, council appointee? I would be honored. Councillor Wells, are you okay as a seconder? Sure, sure. I will just add a further that Councillor Black be appointed as council's. Representative. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Councillor Brunton, please. I just, uh, uh, the terms of reference that are referred to in your motion, uh, who is going to draft them and when would we see them? I'll have to ask staff for that. Mr. Um, Mr. Gazelle, thoughts? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so we've already done some, some research into it, and it's already begun. So I, I imagine that I'll be working with, directly with the CAO, and we should have something uh, probably to the second CIC in June. Um, so it should just be... Is that be, our meeting of the 21st or whatever? Or, or we could do it then. But the, I think there's a lot on the 21st agenda, so it would probably go to the, sec, uh, the, the CIC on... Oh, I'm just trying to do my... Well, mind. the reason I, I ask that question, I know you... If we 17. go out and advertise for people, I mean, uh, I assume when you say fundraising is going to be one of the one mandates. part of it, yes. So I, I would hope it doesn't scare people off. That's all I'm concerned about. Uh, they know that ahead of time. Okay, thank you. Anything further? Councilor oh, Height. Thank you, Mayor Luke. I guess I'm a bit confused on what this uh, basically a task force for this new facility or whatever we're going to call it now. I guess I'm, I'm a bit confused on what the real goal is. I think, it, I think it's great that we have, you know, so many volunteers looking forward to helping with the project, but at some point in time, we need real professionals to help with the project, too. We've, we've done the community input. We've, we've had the traveling road show, I guess, for lack of a better word, come with their recommendations. Council's approved those recommendations. And I don't know, I kind of feel like we're throwing these people under the bus saying, here you go, build us a $70 million facility, and where, where do you bring in some professional help with these people? Is it after this committee goes on so far, or to help them go on so far? I don't quite understand the purpose of it. Well, if I can respond to that, uh, I, I don't see this as a competition of who's going to build it or who isn't, or this is who this may eliminate or not. I see this as an extra set of hands uh, in the months ahead to do quite a bit of legwork that'll be required. Uh, certainly I agree with you that a consultant at some point will just simply have to be, in my opinion, hired by county to projects of this magnitude have to have, uh, in my opinion, that, that component. But I, I think there's a lot of legwork here and I, I see their role, Councillor Height, being very similar uh, to our other advisory committees to give advice to council, to staff, work with staff and give advice here and to help move this thing along. I would just add one more thing. Um, and I know, please, please uh, forgive me for 
making this comment again, the funding from upper tier to me is critical in, in, in any type of facility for this county or any municipality. Um, and as you know, in July of this year, we will be a lame council. So I don't really see sort of, I, I see this advisory committee helping to keep things moving along uh, through the six months till we get a new council in place uh, December, most likely uh, uh, really in full effect in January. So I, I think there's a lot of groundwork going out and looking at other facilities, uh, seeing what they have, look at how they applied for funding, meeting with user groups. I mean, uh, obviously, I can't give you a description at this time of exactly what will take place because I don't think this county's ever been involved in anything of this magnitude. But I know an extra set of hands that can uh, uh, meet and uh, do some of the legwork. Uh, and mostly I see it assisting staff with some of the legwork and meeting with user groups and uh, looking at all the components of the application and uh, working with staff. So again, to, to say exactly how effective this group will be, well, I, I hope it'll be very effective and enthusiastic and can, can maybe fill some, some, some job roles that will come up, I'm sure. Go ahead, Councillor Height. That, that's the best I can give you tonight. Okay, I appreciate that, Mr. Mayor. And at the same time, like these people will go forward for the next uh, five months or something, but I just feel it's our job to give some money to them to be able to actually do something. If we're going to do it, they're, they're, they're going to, it's going to cost money. I know uh, last week's council, we approved a little bit of funding for the other committee and things like that, but really this will be like a fact-finding mission for the next, what, seven months? Anyhow. And obviously council could be in the lame duck situation and their hands are going to be tied because we haven't approved anything soon enough. And I don't know if this comes back, you're thinking second week of June, Mr. Clerk, so that at that point is when we could actually put some funding aside? At some point we have to. Well, I think the committee will certainly, if there's some funding needed for something, I think they would, uh, like any committee, would have to request it to this council. But I don't see this as the, the group at all handling the money. I think that's what we have a staff for and, uh, and a council for. So. Uh, that's, you know, again, I think, you know, we'll cross those bridges when we get to it, but I think it's maybe going to be a big help to have a committee to do some of the legwork. Um, any, anyone else? Councillor Columbus? Mr. Mayor, as you know, I put a motion on the floor a few weeks ago for reconsideration. And in, in my motion, it called for things like uh, that the, to go forward with a recreational community um, facility, I don't want to call it a hub anymore, that it would not affect the activities and programs in other urban areas, other communities of Norfolk. Also, an impact on what the average taxpayer would, how much it would cost the average taxpayer over a 20-year period. And also that nothing goes forward unless we get at least two-thirds dollars from the federal and provincial government. So does that, does this motion here or this board can they supersede my motion <laughs> nobody can supersede your motion that was approved by council uh, I would think starting point would to go over very clearly the motion that council passed um, so that they very clearly understand what council's desires are and uh, their minutes would come here for our uh, review and uh, as I say I don't see this committee as a competition of council I see it as one to do some of the late work that's some that's that's how I put it okay uh, and can I ask mr. Cribs if uh, if uh, there is work ongoing already at this time about what I guess we don't have those numbers about what how it would affect the average taxpayer in Norfolk over 20 years probably nothing's happened on that yet because we don't know what facility costs are and that type of thing. Any comments, Mr. Well, you are correct. I, I can't provide you with a financial number of that nature and, and we're months, perhaps a year away from that exact figure. Uh, just so that council understands, uh, we are working on multiple fronts on this issue. So what you can expect in the coming six weeks 
a series of reports dealing with, uh, uh, that are structural, dealing with our fundraising policy, naming rights, donations, uh, use of uh, the county's charitable number, and how that can happen lawfully uh, with respect to fundraising. Uh, in addition, uh, we have a team assembled of uh, a number of uh, ranking staff from across the corporation, uh, planning, legal, finance, I don't leave anyone out, but uh, facilities, engineering, so it goes. Um, working on the staff level, we've taken the motion that this council passed, that you, uh, your motion, uh, so I don't have it in front of me, it's, it's 14, 15 points, so we actually have sort of a poster board made up and those are our 14, those are our marching orders with which we are adhering to. We are also working on the facilities analysis, which will be that special uh, purpose meeting of this uh, closed session meeting of this council on the 21st of next month. Um, and then in addition to that, in reference to uh, Councillor Heights earlier commentary, we are, uh, we will also be bringing a report to you with some estimates uh, because Councillor Hyde is correct. At some point, we do need some money um, to go forward with, with the consultant. It's premature to get the consultant because we still have to put more pieces together, but we're getting closer to that. So we're sort of, there are four separate moving parts that different teams are working on and bringing the stuff forward. In a, and then lastly, of course, in the event you choose to pass this motion, uh, the clerk's office has already initiated steps for terms of reference for the advisory committee uh, to give the, the public a vehicle to get involved and help push this thing forward, uh, should that be the eventual will of council. So you'll be receiving at four different meetings or yeah, at four different meetings, you'll be receiving different documents in the coming sort of six weeks pertaining to different aspects of this project as a whole. Any, go ahead, Councillor Geisens. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We talk about um, the legwork, well, didn't that committee do most of the legwork when we were talking about what people wanted and, and wanted to have? Uh, I guess I'm having some problems with putting people there or other, there may be well, but the, what it really has to come down to is a consultant or an engineer or something to do the, uh, the legwork or whatever. To me, that's where we should be going rather than uh, three or four people or five people, and uh, I'm not supporting that part of it, so I will not uh, be uh, voting. Thank you. Thank you. Anything further? Councillor Black? We had a recorded vote. Go ahead when you're ready. I don't think there's any more comments. Councillor Wells. Yes. Councillor Brunton. Yes. Councillor Black. Yes. Councillor Oliver. Yes. Councillor Columbus. Yes. Councillor Geisens. No. Councillor Height. No. Mayor Luke. Yes. Motion carries. Motion's carried. Thank you. We will meet back in the council chamber at five o'clock for a public meeting. Thank you. We'll have a short recess.